Look at this tiny varroa mite. It's really skilled at hiding on the bee while it hitches a ride. The bees find it difficult to groom them off and it only takes one single female to start the infestation of a whole bee colony. Depending on the season, up to around 80% of the varroa in your colony are hiding in the brood cells, well protected under the wax cappings, alongside the developing baby bees. So when you're looking at bees coming and going from the entrance or through the windows of your flow hive, the mites on the bees are very hard to spot. And if you do actually start to see them, it's a sure sign that the infestation level is critically high and the colony may be in real danger of collapse. Now, because the mites are so hard to see, beekeepers have developed ways to figure out the amount of varroa in a colony accurately. This allows them to make more informed decisions about helping their bees manage the mites. If you don't monitor your colonies already, you may not recognize a high level of infestation and without your help, your hive could be at a greater risk of collapsing. Another reason to monitor for varroa is that it helps to determine the best time to apply a treatment. Unfortunately, we know that we can't eradicate the mites completely, so why waste time and money throwing a treatment in your hive when the mite numbers are low? But then when you do treat for varroa, you really wanna make sure that it's worked and that it's knocked your mite numbers down. So it's actually really helpful to monitor mite numbers both before and after your treatment to see how effective it's been. This will also help you to understand when you might need to treat again. And a great side effect is that it also gets you back into your brood box to check out what's happening in there. Now monitoring goes hand in hand with good record keeping. So it's great to stay consistent and log your monitoring results. This will give you a clear picture of how mite numbers tend to change from one season to the next and even from year to year. Like most things in beekeeping, when it comes to varroa monitoring, the method, timing and frequency can depend on a few factors. These can include your climate, seasonality, and how the nectar flow is going, as well as your own time availability. Generally in most climates, spring will bring nectar and the bee population will really start to take off. The queen will lay a lot of brood, including drone brood. This provides the perfect environment for the mites to breed up really quickly. Mite reproduction rates depend on the amount of brood in the hive. Now this is a key thing to remember. The more brood in the colony, the faster the mites will breed. This is especially true for drone brood as the mites prefer it to worker brood. The drones spend about three days longer in their cell pupating than the workers do. And this means that the number of mites that can emerge from a drone cell is just about doubled. Once the mites emerge from those cells, they spend some days feeding up on the adult bees and then they're ready to breed again and they'll jump straight back into a cell that's about to be capped. So we know that bee brood production and mite reproduction are closely linked. Generally with the seasons, as the bee population peaks, so too will the mite population. And as the bee population declines, so too will the mites ability to reproduce. In most countries, beekeepers will monitor their hives three to four times a year, coinciding with the change of seasons and the honey flow. For a more detailed monitoring time frame in your particular area, it's a great idea to consult an experienced local beekeeper. Since Varroa made its way to Australia in 2022, Australian beekeepers have found that during the initial build-up phase, due to reinfestation and other pressures, mite numbers have stayed really high all year round and that they've had to monitor far more frequently than in other countries, as much as every four to six weeks. This hopefully shouldn't be a permanent state and mite numbers are expected to stabilise over time. Of course, in beekeeping, there's always more than one way to do something. Some monitoring methods include an alcohol or soapy water wash, which is generally a similar action, a sugar shake, a CO2 roll. Uh, you can monitor using the tray, the bottom board or sticky mats, and you can uncap drones. It can be really helpful to choose a method that works for your beekeeping style and stick to it. Staying consistent like this and keeping records will help you to find your treatment thresholds and get a clear picture over time of what to expect in regards to mite numbers. We'll go into depth about monitoring methods and treatment thresholds a bit later on. How many hives you monitor depends on the size of your apiary and your available time. Every hive has a different level of infestation, so to get the most accurate picture, you would monitor every single hive in your apiary. But if you have a lot of hives or don't have very much time, you could focus on just monitoring the hives on the ends of the row, as well as those that look weaker. The end hives tend to get the most bee drift, meaning their varroa numbers might be much higher than the other hives. 
and the weaker colonies may just have a high infestation, making them weak. A quick way to tell if a colony might be weak is to watch the traffic at the entrance and to check the windows in the flow super. Depending on the size of your apiary, other approaches can include monitoring every second or third hive or monitoring a particular percentage of the apiary, for example, 10%. In peak season, 1,500 to 2,000 new bees emerge from their cells every single day. And over 1,000 older bees will die of natural causes. Now the standard sample size that beekeepers use to monitor is half a cupful, which equates to roughly 300 bees. Collecting 300 bees gives a good representation of the mite load in your colony without greatly impacting population numbers in the whole hive. And as it's the worldwide standard sample size, we're able to easily compare data from other beekeepers and learn from their results. It's also pretty simple to collect the sample as we all have these measuring cups in our kitchen and bees are pretty easy to shake and then scoop. When they're riding on the adult bees, the varroa mites feed on the fat body of the bee. Now due to their well-nourished fat bodies, the young nurse bees are more likely to have mites than the older field bees. The nurse bees are the ones responsible for taking care of the brood, so the brood frames are where they hang out. When you're monitoring, choose a frame with both open and capped brood to get plenty of nurse bees in your shake. So as I mentioned, depending on the season, up to 80% of the mites in the hive are under the capping, maybe even more if drone brood is present. Now due to our sample of around 300 bees, it's fairly simple to work out the number of mites per 100 bees which is what we call the mite infestation percentage in your colony. For example, if I find three mites in my sample of 300 bees, then I have a 1% infestation, one mite for every 100 bees. With a sample of around 300 bees, all we have to do is divide our mite count by three to get an estimate of the infestation percentage in the hive. It's really important to remember that these are only the mites riding on the adult bees, which depending on the season might only be about 20% of the actual mite level in the colony. Most of them are busy making babies under the capping. So to have a more complete idea of what the future might bring for the colony, we really need to be aware of what's happening both inside and outside the colony. For instance, how much brood is there in the colony? What season is it? Is the colony ramping up for the high season or slowing down for the low season? Or has it had a brood break? For example, has it just gone through a cold winter? Has it swarmed, been split, or been requeened? And this brings us to the treatment threshold. A treatment threshold is a particular number or percentage of mites at which you decide as the beekeeper to treat the colony or the apiary with whatever treatment method you decide to use. A specific threshold number is generally recommended by the governing body in an area, so it can be helpful to get local advice. But once beekeepers know this information, it's mostly up to them to decide their own treatment threshold and based on their own beekeeping. Threshold numbers can vary around the world and even between beekeepers and vary over the years. They can also vary depending on things like your climate, the season, and the presence of viruses. Remember, just because there are no mites in your wash, it doesn't mean they're all gone from your hive. They're just in numbers low enough to escape detection by the monitoring method. So your bees might still look okay when you inspect them, but as mite numbers escalate, there is a point where the colony will collapse. At the present time, many Australian beekeepers are finding that the mite numbers they see are far above a typical overseas treatment threshold, as well as the threshold recommended in Australia. This may be due to the absence of viruses such as deformed wing virus. This is important for the timing of treatments and will change over time as mite numbers stabilize.